What's up, math scholars? We're learning 1.5. We're going to do a bunch of work with equations. So who's excited? It's Wednesday. <laughs> so we've already jotted down our Celsius to Fahrenheit formula. I even put it on the formula board. But uh, C stands for Celsius. F stands for Fahrenheit. Here's our next formula we're going to jot down. Yeah, write this one down. I equals P. R T. This can help you figure out and uh, if you would invest money. So if you would stick money in the bank and invest it for a certain number of years, I'll tell you what all those different letters stand for. So um, P stands for your principal investment amount. R stands for your rate. So a lot of banks will say, hey, you get 5%. That needs to be in as a decimal. Your percent needs to be in as a decimal. And then T stands for time. And then I will be your interest earned. All right, in our final formula of the day, this is a very famous one. Distance equals rate times time. It can help you tra uh, figure out how far you can travel. So D equals distance. This one you use more often than any other formula. R is your rate, like miles per hour. And T is your time in hours normally. Your rate is your speed normally in miles per hour. Our first one's a uh, temperature problem. The temperature is 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's going to be an F number. We want to convert it to Celsius. So we'll use that new formula that I just put on the board today. And we'll be plugging that 33 in for F. So it'll be 9 over 5 times 33 minus 32. Um, I normally get my answer like in a decimal. Oh, did I write it down wrong? Oh yeah, I wrote it down wrong, I'm sorry. It should be 5 over 9. So let's, sorry, I hope you're not using pen. We're just going to make that a 5 over 9. I don't know, my brain just reversed it, I'm sorry. So it's up being 5 over 9 times 1, doesn't it? which is about 0.5 repeating degrees. So 32 degrees is zero degrees Celsius, or just slightly above zero degrees Celsius. You are traveling 150 miles to your cousin's house. Is that a distance or a rate or a time? That's a distance. Um, you travel at a rate of 50 miles per hour. That's a rate. So this is a distance. This is a rate. Um, when will you get to your cousin's house? So we're going to be trying to find the time. So my 150 is my distance. My 50 is my rate. And I'm going to be trying to find my time. Now we technically haven't solved equations like this yet, but I bet you can figure it out. Caspian? Would you do 150 divided by 50? Yeah. So um, I don't know if you did this last year. We haven't done it in this class. Just move in numbers to the other side. If they're multiplying, you can divide it over. But it's going to be three hours. So it'll take us three hours to drive to the cousin's house. I'll pause that list. All right, we're doing another distance example. Paul is running at the rate of 0.15 miles per minute. That's a rate for 40 minutes. That's a time. Normally we want to stick that in the... Okay, it's a rate per minute, so it is in minutes. I always think uh, rates are in miles per hour and you want it in hours, but we're in minutes. That's unique. The next day, Paul and Jen ran together at a rate of 0.16 miles per minute for 50 minutes. So that's another rate and another time. 
We're going to do these calculations separate. We're going to do our day one calculations to figure out how far Paul went. And then we'll do our day two calculations to see how far Paul and Jen went together. And we'll add them up at the end. All right, so day one, distance equals rate times time. Our rate is 0.15. Our time is 40 minutes. 0.15 miles per minute for 40 minutes. You multiply those numbers together. And so the first day he went six miles. All right. And then day two, same deal. They are going a little faster. 0.16 miles per minute for 50 minutes. They're running faster and for more time. Eight miles. Okay, thank you. Oh. So it looks like Paul did 14 miles in two days. He's he's training for something. Marathon runner, something. All right, let's pause and let you catch up and ask questions. I thought I thought I'd never see an interest problem. How much interest would be earned on a four thousand dollar account invested for 20 years at five percent? So this is the formula that Jose was saying looked really hard. It's, it looks really hard because there's just so many letters. Let me write it down and refresh the letters real quick. P is your principal amount, the original deposit in the account. What do you think the original uh, deposit amount is? 4000 very good. Now, rate is the hardest one. It's normally an interest rate. It's normally given to you as a percent, but you have to put it in as a decimal. Kenneth, what were you thinking? Perfect. He remembered the day we did decimal day or percent day. You have to move that decimal over twice. And then the time? 20 years, the only number we haven't used. This is how much interest we will earn. It's called common or uh, simple interest. 4,000 times 0 0.05 times 20. Oh gosh, is this correct? We're going to earn $4,000 in interest? And when our original investment was only $4,000, so we'll double our money. $8,000 total at the end of the scenario. Oh, if I type it in right. That's great. In 20 years, you'll double your money. That's, that's, terrible. Terrible. that's, that's terrible, they're saying. You are going to buy hamburger buns for an upcoming picnic. Each bag of buns, I don't know why they're calling them rolls, I call them hamburger buns. Each bag of buns costs $1.30 and has eight rolls. But we need 64 hamburger rolls. So how much money will it cost us? What do you think we should do first? We should probably figure out how many packages of buns we should buy, right? We do that by doing what? 64 divided by eight, very good. So we need to buy eight packages. Now what should I do? Perfect, multiply the number of packages you need by the price. Who was saying that, right? Yeah, scholar, right? Ten dollars and forty cents. Ten dollars in hamburger buns. All right, we're gonna make this our last problem because we're on connection schedule today. I, I got a neighbor. He's building a sandbox for his kids. He enclosed it by one foot wide railroad ties. We need to find out the area inside the sandbox to help us figure out how much sand to buy. So this is the area, the actual place where the sand is going to go. It's not 10 by 10 because of that outer frame. Mm, close. Somebody said it. Where's the scholar? Brad, Brad's a scholar. How did you figure out 8 by 8? If this is 1 foot here and this is 1 foot here, it's actually 10 minus 1 minus 1. So that's 8. Same with the other side. If this is 1 and this is 1, it's 10 minus 1 minus 1. So it's going to be 8. So we'll do 8 times 8, and that's our area of the sandbox. 64. And you know area, how you label area? Square feet. Feet squared. That just means you're covering an area. It's probably our first area problem all year. Feet squared. 64 feet squared. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our video tonight. Your worksheet, it's 1.5 worksheet, but I didn't copy it for you. You're going to have to get yourself in Polaris. Let me show you one last time where that's at.
so people in my video can see this. I don't actually I don't know on the video if they're going to be able to see if I go off a smart notebook. But you'll go into Polaris, you'll go into Algebra 1, you'll then click Homework, my computer catch up to my brain speed here, Chapter 1, Homeworks. And this is where you can find every single homework regardless of it, if it's a worksheet or out of the book. So last night was 1-4 out of the book, it was captured there, oops, I meant to click 1-5. And then 1-5 is tonight right here, and it's this worksheet. Okay? So that's how you'll find it. Now you'll go to connections after third period. After third, not next. Okay? Thanks for watching the video, everybody.